Kim, are the city website doesn't have this one up. What do you mean? Oh, you know, the teleconferencing link on the city website. The only one that's there is a budget work session. I was trying to find it to send to Mike Pincus. I already sent it to Mike. Oh, cool. All right. Um, oh, wait, wait. Did I send it to Mike? No, I sent it to someone else. Hold on. All right. Um, I was searching for the email you sent me with all the links. That's okay. I just sent it to uh, Andrew. Andrew asked for it. Hold on. Uh, sent items. Let me send it over. Mike. Oh. Do I have, there he is. Okay, just sent it to him, CC'd you in case someone else needs it. Okay, cool. And then I can't fix the website this morning. Um, no. <laughs> I, not on there, but that's okay. Yeah. I'll That'll figure work. it out. Um, might have been some confusion because we've got, we, there was another one on for tonight that had to be moved because of the budget work session. So I'm wondering if they accidentally took both the other meetings off. Probably. That makes sense. Yeah. I had to move my historic preservation to next week. Is there anyone we're not expecting? I never got a I, Steve and I were texting, but he never confirmed. So he may or may not, but everybody else is supposed Good. to be here this morning. Great. They fixed it so I don't have to go upstairs to the council chambers and start it and then come back down and log myself oh, in. And then that's nice. myself, yeah, I don't have to do that back and forth anymore. That's really nice. This is the first one I've done it. It was so exciting. I hit the button and I'm like, oh, the meeting has started. I can start the <laughs> meeting from my desk. You don't have to run up and down the stairs. Mask on, mask off, mask on. Try not to, you know, try to see with my glasses, glasses off, glasses on. There you go.
Morning. 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 You look comfy. <laughs> Are you sitting outside, Fran? No, but that is my backyard. I just took a picture of it and used it as a virtual background. <laughs> I was thinking the other day I did on another one, but this morning's too chilly. Yeah, a little cooler today. Although when it was super cold out, this would have seemed warm. Yeah. 
Yeah, we'll go from 65 to 90 in about a week, probably, you know. Yeah, I know. Skip right over the open window. Yeah, yeah. Where you don't need the air conditioner or the AC. Let's just go right to the hot stuff. Yeah. Good morning. I am taking my kids to school. Do I need to be on video? Nope. No. Nope. Not. Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to mute and check out PD. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. So that's that's Stumper's joint. He's clearly got a visitor at today's meeting. That's his couch. <laughs> yeah, he looks goofy coot too. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't let us he, he's got his own leather couch. Must be nice. <laughs> We're gonna wait three place the couch till the dog goes. <laughs> Get someone as a call in. I'm just going to unmute them to try to find out who it is. <clears throat> it says Mike Pincus is Business Development Commission joining. Oh, I move. Yeah, no, I, I'm going to promote him over to panelists, but there's a phone number too. Morning, Mike. Morning. So you're not the phone number. I'm trying to figure out who the phone number is. Who's the phone number? I'm not. Yes, Ken Crehan is the phone oh. number. Awesome, Ken. I've moved you over so you can talk and you can listen. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I, I'm driving in right now, so Zoom wasn't, uh, wasn't cooperating. <laughs> no worries. And you're still good. We only have three of you right now, so we can't start the meeting anyway. Okay. Hey, Mike, I'm Bob Weber. I think we met. Hi, Bob. Mike Pinkus, yeah. I don't think we've met either. Good to meet you. Or Andrew. Hello, Andrew. I'm Bob Weber. Mike and Andrew are both with the Business Development Commission. So they okay. are joining us this morning as visitors to sit in, listen to our meeting, Good. let you all know what is available to you. Morning, Helen. Morning. Morning. Helen, I saw you something go viral. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I still don't understand how TikTok is working, but we hired a new person who certainly does. And but she's new enough that I didn't know that the first part of it was like part of the shtick. And I was right. getting, I was getting really freaked out that I had a staff member sharing way too much personal information. And mm -hmm. then it all came together. But yeah, it's been great. Yeah, it was very clever. Yeah, the fact that she was new and we'd never seen her face before is what pulled it off. 
It's like she was. Why she are she you was reading? Yeah, I was saying uh, her new person was reading something from a book they were selling. But since we she's yeah. new, you thought she was telling you her story, and then you find out at the end, and, and it's all in this book. And she held up the book. It was really cool, but it went viral. Wow. She starts off basically explaining that she went to, she just finished her PhD and she got really drunk and went to Vegas and accidentally got married to another woman. And she's telling all this, just sort of like embarrassed and she's just telling it as her story. And I'm like, what the hell is happening? And then all of a sudden, as you're totally, she's like, so I think I'm going to do this. And then she holds up the book and she's like, and that's the plot of this book. And it was like, <laughs> oh my God. That's awesome. <laughs> so good. So Bob, technically you do have, no, you only have four. Yeah, you only have four. four. I keep accidentally counting Mike. <laughs> <laughs> we need John, Steve, or Angel. I feel like I talked to John and Angel both yesterday, but maybe only Angel. John on Friday. Normally at this point, I would text him the website URL. Sorry, what was that? I said, normally at this point, I would text them the website URL, but I can't do that because it's not there right now. No, I sent it to you. Oh, I, you sent it to me? All right. Yeah, when I sent it to Mike, I see you'd have it. Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. There it is. And I have not put my phone on do not disturb yet in case someone tries to call because they can't get through. All right. Angel says, give her 30 seconds. And here's John. Good morning, everybody. Hi, John. Good morning. Hello. Should we, you want to get started now, or do you want to let Angel get in? I think you're fine either way. You could go ahead and get started, I'm sure. Okay, let's call the order. Uh, approval of minutes, or do we have to do something before approval of minutes? This is my oh, first. That's the first one. You're on mute, Holland. I make so a motion I to saw approve. that she made a motion. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't catch a second. Did anybody second? Ken Freehan, I second. Okay, we have a. Uh, uh, let's see, we. Have, okay, we have approval. Minutes. Okay, well, we have two visitors for visitors. Uh, so you actually have to vote. You have to call for. Does everybody vote on the? Oh, okay. After it's been seconded. Oh, okay. Uh, vote on approval of minutes. Aye. 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 Okay. And then ask for opposed. Opposed. All right. Cool. Okay. 
Uh, we have two visitors, Mike Pincus and Andrew Scavato. They're with the Business Development Commission, and they're going to tell us a little bit about that, I think. Good morning, all. Um, yeah, I, I, we just wanted to come and sit in. Um, we're trying to work on uh, a few things. One, let you know what we do. Um, you know, as Business Development Commission, um, we're kind of sitting over the uh, business districts. Um, we're trying to help bring them all together, bring them more cohesive. There's a lot that happens that you guys are doing that um, maybe old Webster is doing something else. And we're trying to just, you know, be there for support. Um, working on a few things, but we thought it'd be good to start coming out to, um, you know, to some of your all's meetings as well as the other business, business districts. Um, and we have, you know, members of our group that are citizens at large that are in Old Webster, um, that are in Old Orchard. Um, I don't think we have a Crossroads rep right now, but we're always trying to get one. So, um, yeah, just wanted to tell you a little bit about what we do. Andrew, do you have anything to add? That's that's a good summary, Mike. And thanks. I, you know, the, one of the goals of the commission right now is, I think, to you know, you know, uh, one of the foundational goals of the the commission is to if, you know improve and assist with connectivity between the business districts and directly with the business districts between the commission and the districts. And you know, I think it's, it's a strategic goal of the business development commission to uh, you know think about how we can facilitate more and improve uh, communication between the commission and the individual business districts. And we're working on that. We're doing some strategic planning and thinking about that. And, and one obvious first step is to, is to uh, attend more meetings, uh, you know, remind each district that the business development commission is here for this purpose and, you know, just uh, make ourselves available for comments and discussions, questions, and just uh, be available better understand the issues that are facing each district. So thanks for having us. Great. Thanks. All right, um, let's go on to old business. Uh, Streetscape update, Mayor. So we went ahead and uh, had our meeting with the contractor that's been selected to do the streetscape. Um, we met with them as well as someone from MoDOT uh, to confirm everything that we were doing. Um, and timing is pushed off a little bit only because of um, most materials are taking a really long time to get to people. If they were just doing the sidewalks, they could be in and out and done and get it done now. Um, but the problem is the, the lights. So they've ordered the lights or are ordering the lights and that's gonna slightly shift the timing of when they're gonna start the construction. They're hoping maybe to start next month in June um, they are planning to start on the far end um, down by Holland and make their way to the east. Um, I'm going to know more specifically um, dates ahead of time of when they're going to start. Um, the sidewalk itself is really, really quick. They could be in and out um, very quickly. The overall time frame is supposed to be three months, but they have to get it done in three months. But they've said in terms of getting in and doing the tear up and put the sidewalk in, that could actually only take as little as a month. Um, they're just kind of tied into needing to get the light fixtures in and a few of those other key things. Um, but everything's looking pretty good to go. Um, the contractor is, is known um, by, they do quite a few streetscape projects for um, I think county and, and with MoDOT so they know what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to move forward. Um, we've talked with them uh, very closely about making sure that they're aware about where porta potties go and um, notifying people about uh, when the construction's starting and keeping as many people in the loop as possible. Um, and so we're waiting uh, to see a little bit more about the exact dates, but do know it should be starting soon. Any questions? All right, how about the uh, gazebo series update? I missed the meeting. I clocked in at six and didn't realize that it was at five. So I don't have any updates from that. Uh, anybody else attend that one? Yes, I did. Um, John was on at the beginning, but he was uh, tied up with his kids. I but basically, <laughs> yes, and it was real interesting. He had his phone in between his <laughs> wheel and, and we were like, you're gonna have an accident. <laughs> it's like, we'll tell you later. Um, <laughs> 
the biggest news is that it has been announced on social media. Um, we've let people know that it is pending approvals, but it was kind of like a calendar alert. Keep your fingers crossed. We've also lined up the, um, and I don't know if we said on the previous, if everybody knows that the dates have been moved. They're not in June and July. They're in August and September. And the bands are lined up. We announced the bands, uh, Broken Hipster, Brother Francis and the Soul Tones, Third Diesel Island, uh, Hobocane, which is Javier Mendoza, which is an extremely popular one, People's Key and Jake's Lake. That's so good. the next step is we're in the process of, we have to get an approval from St. Louis County for our event plan. And then uh, the city can then uh, approve our special activities permit. Um, I'm meeting with uh, the Times this week to talk about the ad campaigns, see what, uh, it's been a while because we didn't do it last year, but um, more than likely go with the same plan that we did with them in 2019. And uh, revising the sponsorship package, that'll be the next big thing. Um, and at this point, it's also kind of a, a commitment, but we can't take their, you know, until we get the firm approval, anything can happen. That's kind of where things are. There's a couple of uh, other uh, areas, cities that are already doing things earlier that we thought we'd uh, go and check out. Maplewood's got a string fest going on next weekend. Shrewsbury's got something going on this month. Similar type open venues, because that's one of our biggest concerns. We can't control how many people attend. It's not a gated venue. Okay. That's all uh, we got. I'm going to set up another um, organizers meeting next month to which people are still welcome everybody that's on the commission is still welcome to join in and help out bob and john are kind of taking the lead and claire and john uh joe are still involved but taking a back seat john have you been able to get your name on the checking account yet no i've been waiting for um i guess i was going to be i thought i was going to be emailed and set up a time for me to go over and meet someone or do I just need to go over there myself? I felt like it was my um, impression well, I, that Joe was going to go there with you. I got think it. I'm, already, so, I'm already signed on it. So maybe I can go with him, but um, you probably could. I know Joe's around too. I saw him yesterday. So, But uh, John, we can get together. Awesome. I'm out of town the rest of the week, um, yeah. but anytime next week or I'm around for after that. So yeah. There was one other, I ran into uh, Stacy Swiderska up at Paisley and um, she she wants to bring the movies back. And I said, you know, we didn't, it was a pain to get them and pay for them and stuff. And she said, uh, I do all that. I've got all these friends and we want to bring our kids down there. And, uh, so, I, you know, she said she's got the projector that she would be do it all is what she said she would do. And pick out the movies, probably for more younger kid type things. I mean, I don't, it doesn't matter to me, but we wouldn't have to, you know, put the advertisements out that much if she wants to do it and just have her, you know, she said she's connected to tons of young people and stuff with kids. So uh, what, any thoughts on that? Wow. I can't even remember what it was like when it had the movies or without it actually, because we were well, without it. They, they don't start till afterwards because it's got to be dark. And she said, oh, that's fine, you know? So I don't know. <laughs> if we got some doers, I'll let, let, let them do it. <laughs> what's the what's the time for the band starting and stopping currently? They start at uh, seven and play till 8.30. And if we were doing movies, then at nine, you'd have a movie starting, basically? Basically, yeah. I don't think it infringes or changes anything about the music and the bands, really, then. It's just an add-on at the end. Um, we would have, a uh, in the past, the screen was and all that kind of stuff was set up. With, did she mention if she would be able to do that, too? Yeah, she said she... I, I guess she has one already, and she said it's just been sitting in my car. I don't know what, but she says it's like a blow-up thing that she uses. Um, maybe she was doing it for 
something else, but she knew all about how to get, you know, which movies she can look at, you know, with that are free and that kind of stuff. And we, what was the movie we, <laughs> what was the one movie that <laughs> sent everybody up in smoke or something like that? That didn't go over very well. We got a lot of comments. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was marijuana. Not kid friendly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a marijuana one. <laughs> so uh, we'll we'll tell her to keep that one off it. I don't think she's going to put that on her list to pick. <laughs> that was good old Joe today. <laughs> <laughs> on his way out the door. Yeah. Uh, so I guess I'll talk to her a little further and see. I mean, if she wants to do it all, is it, should we let her run with it? Or, or just maybe tell her to put together what she has, and then we could see if we want to add it. Oh, that's a good idea. That have her come good. to the next meeting, invited yeah. to the next meeting. Yeah, um, I think I invited I mean, her to the the meeting that I showed up an hour late for, but uh, I guess she didn't call in on that either. So no, she didn't. But uh, I'll tell right. her about the next one. All right. Um, anything else on gazebo? I guess. Except Not at this time. Okay. Uh, new business uh, budget update. I'm going to go ahead and share some screens. Um, so just as a reminder, this is the time of year I always kind of remind you of where you are on budget, um, just to give you a sense of how everything's been going. Um, and um, around this time is usually when we see um, we've got another month and a half of, of expenses potentially to spend. Um, so I always try to give you a sense of where you are and what you've spent so far. So um, as we go down the list, um, usually the, the basics, your professional services, your disposal services, electricity and water, those are all pretty straightforward um, in what you spend. Um, they're, they're pretty basic and, and we usually spend all of them. Um, advertising uh, this year is quite low, um, obviously because of the fact that we didn't do the gazebo series. There's a few other things that we did not do that we normally would do. Um, so that money is still in there. It'll just go back into the fund balance um, and it'll go back into the account. Um, we then do our area maintenance. We'd moved over um, the extra money that we had to continue doing lighting on the tops of the buildings. Now we have um, quite a few buildings that I have not gotten to yet just because everyone else has been more focused on other you know, elements of, of keeping their businesses open. But we do probably want to look and see what our next few buildings would be, try to get those scheduled. Um, I did order, um, I contacted the company with all the lighting uh, strands that we usually buy. And I was able to get another um, seven of these rolls of the wiring. Um, they're not making the particular wire that we've been using anymore. Um, so I was able to get the last seven uh, rolls that they had available. After that, we'll have to go to a new, uh, a new strand, but we should be pretty good on that. Um, so other than that, you know, money-wise, you're, you're still under budget um, by quite a bit for both advertising and area maintenance. Um, but just so you know, typically our revenue to date at this point is way closer um, to where we have anticipated it. We usually are project our revenue a little on the low side just to be safe. Um, we had projected our revenue at about 50,000. Um, so far right now, we're only at 31,900. Um, and that is we are low in both areas of money coming in from taxes paid on the property as well as money coming in from business licenses. So it's not one or the other in particular. Um, so we'll just have to kind of be aware of that. And then just as a reminder, which I have it covered on my screen. Um, last year, you did come out way ahead. Um, you were at about 66,000 um, when typically we we're in the 50s. Um, and that we think was partially due to some um, financial institution payments as well as um, finally getting some payment from uh, Bethesda that were required to now start paying um, because they were required to pay before and they weren't supposed to be all nonprofit. 
Um, so that's kind of where we are. Um, I always give you that reminder. Tonight is the budget work session with the city council. Typically, we just present what you've already requested, um, which we all discussed in January, February, and March. Um, and then they make that approval uh, as a part of the budget and our new budget year starts July 1. If there's anything this month or next month that you guys feel like we need to go ahead and hold over as a purchase order, just let me know. Um, I don't think we have any concerns. We could hold over as a purchase order the additional money we need to spend on building lighting, which is not a big deal to do. Um, or we can just, I think we had left a certain amount in for next year. We'll just make sure that we can take care of all the rest of the buildings that we have on the list uh, if we get approvals from building owners. Any other questions about the current budget? No nods, no anything. All right, I got a question, Mara. Yeah. Sorry for delaying so long. I um, So that lack of money coming in, maybe I missed you saying this, was that having to do with business sale, like business license money not coming in? Is that um, a business income kind of situation issue because yeah. of COVID and property taxes? Is that just That's a just delay? People that's just people not paying their taxes yet or not paying their business license. Yeah, it's not necessarily, you know, we don't have a huge number of businesses that have closed. I think it's just people paying late um, or, you know, just haven't paid yet. Okay, so we can expect that at least the property tax money probably to come in still and then they, okay. Yeah, I would say we would anticipate, I, I would assume that we're probably gonna be much closer to the 50 mark versus like our 66 mark that we had last year. And then as a reminder, you have a really, really healthy uh, balance in your fund account. You have almost 130,000 in your fund balance. So even if we have a couple bad years, um, you're still gonna be pretty good uh, until you decide to do some big project like uh, move all the utility wires on the south side of Big Bend and finish off your streetscape uh, on the other side of uh, where we're gonna do our streetscape uh, this this summer. Um, so I don't think you're, I think you're good. I think you're good to go for a while. Thanks for the clarification. Yes. All right, how about uh, facade program application review? So I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on the screen. I'm going to send it to all of you, um, but I know last year we had approved in our budget um, a facade beautification uh, matching grant program. We were kind of uh, modeling it after what Crossroads already does. And we put it in the budget. And then of course, everything happened with COVID and we never ended up keep getting this off the ground. Um, so I wanted to make sure we didn't forget about it because we did have money in the budget for the last year and we've put it back in for this coming year. Um, I wanted all of you to know how Crossroads does it. And I, I went ahead and did a draft, um, basically modeling it exactly after what Crossroads already does. But I think you need to make some determinations and decisions if you wanna follow the same procedure if there are things you want to include or not include that maybe Crossroads does or doesn't include. So I think it's important to, to look at that. So um, typically the application looks like this. The first page is more information um, regarding that it's a $2,000 maximum grant. It has to be matched by the applicant. It's on a first come first serve basis. Um, it gives the ability that you are limited to um, one application per business or uh, one grant per property. So it gives the ability that there's, if there's multi-tenants um, that are you know, in the same building that are tied together that they could potentially, you know, multiple could do it, but it's also supposed to not allow one property owner, a particular property owner to get multiple grants on the exact same property um, unless there are multiple tenants. Um, but we aren't, we don't limit it based on ownership. So if we have a couple different properties under the same owner, um, they can apply under different properties um, and still obtain uh, the grant. Um, we had the application, um, the, the steps to follow where they turn in an application, a recent photograph of the property, drawings of the improvements. 
Um, if it is drawings of the improvements that have had to go to Architecture Review Board, we in Crossroads have asked them to have already gone to Architecture Review Board and get approved so that you don't go there to uh, the tax district, find out you have to make changes based on Architecture Review Board comments and come back again. So we usually recommend go to Architecture Review Board first. Um, written description of the improvements with the materials and colors and a preliminary estimate of the cost. They're supposed to submit it to the chairman, um, but it's care of the city. Um, there is a preliminary approval by the tax district. Then there is supposed to be an on-site inspection to make sure that the work that was approved by the tax district has actually been done. Um, and usually that gets tied to um, the application and our final inspection for if it required a building permit. Now, some things don't require a building permit. They might be painting. They might be something else that might not have required a building permit. And it, as such, we would then do a different type of inspection. Upon final approval, um, we have to have the final contractor's itemized bid um, and they need to make sure that they give a final approval on that. Final payment is made um, after we have the work that's been completed and that we have verification that the contract has been, uh, the amount has been paid for. Um, and then we uh, submit that um, to our finance department and then the money goes back to the applicant. The application itself um, is at the end, but we had a series, and this is where I wanna make sure you're comfortable with all this. This is what Crossroads had determined were important things that they wanted to determine of who's eligible, what work is considered for funding, what cannot be funded. So for example, considered for funding, facade improvements, renovations to building entrances, uh, landscaping, um, beautification of the property, um, even things in the rear entrance or some yard improvements to the property, uh, renovations or restorations to storefront windows and doors, um, professional fees for renovation or beautification design. Things that weren't supposed to be funded. Um, they, they had determined, again, this is crossroads and you can make some determinations if you want it to be different, business signage of any kind. And I think the determination on that was the signage follows the property owner. And so if you're paying for signage that then comes down at some point, if that business leaves, um, the intent of this facade program is to make it that are gonna stay with the property. So business signage was not allowed Sidewalk maintenance or repair to the public sidewalk was not allowed. Anything that was deferred maintenance um, because they had, had it had been a vacant property and hadn't been maintained for a period of time. Any roofing that wasn't visible from the front facade. No interior work was included. No repairs or utility conversions. No paving of parking lots, and no fencing. Um, so those were all considered things that they did not want to be funded. Again, this is crossroads to eliminate and you can decide what you want to do. Um, and then the overall criteria for your evaluation was to look at things that priority would be given to the visual quality of the district. Um, priority would be, criteria would be given for renovations of storefronts and building facades, um, that it was in compliance with any district guidelines. They don't really have any district guidelines. You're not in a, in a historic district. Um, improvement to the rear or building or areas that uh, butted up against residential neighbors, improvement to parking areas that might be, you know, lacking in landscaping, um, beautification of the overall district environment or streetscape, and improvement of problem areas. Um, so those are all important um, uh, things that we need to determine and discuss. And then the last thing was a real basic application. Um, gave the information on uh, estimated cost, other information on who the applicant was, um, and then gave a, a quick uh, list of items. So I wanted to kind of leave that out here if there's some questions you wanted to ask right away. And then I was um, assuming that I would then forward this on to all of you to think about between now and next meeting and make some determinations on, do you wanna make changes? Does this work just as it is? Um, so that you could potentially start getting the word out for any um, facade improvements that might be made to the district. Any questions? I don't have questions. I really like the idea. I, I mean, I liked it when we first started talking about it and I like kind of the, the monetary limit, like kind of area right now. I think that allows you to do at least something um, 
So I'm a big fan. I like the way it's laid out. I'd probably have to spend a little more time like reading the whole thing. This is Angel, I agree. I'm sorry for my delay this morning. One of the questions I was seeing is rear entrances. I don't know if that's something that's, we want something to be able to, would we see it? So yeah, that is a conversation and you might want to change something about rear entrances that rear entrances, um, you know, have to be for um, not just employees or if rear entrances, um, I'm going to need into your office, Darren. I'm going to hit stop share for a second. Um, so uh, looking at rear entrances, um, you would um, you, you might want to put some additional things on there um, that would uh, limit that it can only be if um, customers do get to see that area, if it backs up to a parking lot. Um, there might be some additional things you want to put in. Crossroads, all their rear entrances kind of back up to not just private, but to either city parking lots or public parking lots. So I think they didn't feel like they needed to put anything else in there. I know over here we're trying to beautify all of our back entrances. You know, some of them are visible from uh, Bethesda in the parking. People are starting to use the parking behind Falcon and behind Weber's even has um, the kind of side back entrance. Um, uh, and whatever everybody has back entrance and on the back of Frisco, Serendipity, Sill mm -hmm. Alchemy, all of that. So I could see why. Two, two grand to make those look pretty would be nice also. So um, I don't have any problem with that part. If no one has anything else at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna forward that, um, I'm gonna forward you as soon as the meeting is over, both the budget, just so that everyone can see where we were. I'm gonna also forward you this, um, and I'll, I'll call it a draft, um, but this draft of the, the, the application and the guidelines. And then it, we can put it on the agenda for next month and make some final determinations so that we can share it um, with business owners and maybe get a couple of these projects going. One last thing you should make a determination on is, do you want a time frame like for improvements that were done in the last year? That because we didn't have the application available, but you officially put it in your budget starting last July 1. Do you want to do any retroactive uh, projects? You can think about that um, or make a decision of how it needs to move forward. Okay. All right, uh, BDC update. I have multiple BDC members and attendees, so I'll let them do a BDC update. Is that you, Mike, or Andrew? Hold on. Mike is driving and Mike is muted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I I, I I guess I'm not sure what the agenda item is. We're just updating on the goings on of the Business Development Commission. Yeah, typically this is where, which I think the BDC has asked this question, this is where we always update uh, each of the districts. It's on every agenda for every business district of, hey, what happened at BDC? Is there something important that we need to share? Yeah, I think we covered at the beginning. I think the, the biggest takeaway from our last BDC meeting was um, the idea that we're going to be doing some, some pretty heavy strategic planning on how to increase connectivity, not only amongst the business districts, but between the commission and the business districts. And um, we spent most of our time on that. And I think that's what we're going to be working on in the coming months, primarily. Um, and so well, that's one of the reasons why we're going to uh, you know, attend more meetings and if anybody wants to reach out or has questions for the commission or wants to communicate with the commission on anything, we want to do a better job of making the commission available uh, and responsive to that. Mara, anything else you want to add? I don't think I have anything else to add. Um, they're continuing to work and you are more than welcome at any time to attend BDC meetings. Um, we, I know that they, um, in their subcommittee that they've been working on, have in, involved other members who might not be on commissions um, and trying to keep that going. All right, thanks. Um, city update, Mo. Hold on two seconds and okay. I will give you an update. Sorry, too many. 
devices on the computer right now. Um, okay, so I what I've been doing to make it easier um, on poor Fran uh, with updates is I've been using uh, last month's minutes to do a quick reminder of things that are going on right now. Um, so a lot of the businesses that I told you about last month are still moving forward. Um, Wing Stops under construction, Zushi, which is a sushi restaurant in Yorkshire Plaza is under construction. Didi Mao, I can't remember if they've opened yet. I feel like they have and I just haven't noticed yet because it's been a busy couple of weeks. Um, Union Bagels is under construction. I know a lot of you have asked about Lona's Little Eats. Um, they have at this point sort of withdrawn, um, but we'll wait and see if something is going to happen or move forward. Um, they haven't, um, th we've pulled them off the plan commission at this point um, and we're gonna wait until we're, we're getting better uh, uh, sense of what's gonna happen or go on. Um, Amy's Cake Pop Shop and Boozy Bites should be opening quite soon. Um, the Total Access Urgent Care, um, they're finishing up some other improvements you've probably seen. They demolished the two existing structures. Um, we're working with them and MSD and St. Louis County in regards to improvements to the right-of-way and uh, the lot itself. Um, and then they should be starting construction at some time soon. Um, Hickson Middle School is continuing with their construction. Fire Station 2 continuing with their construction. Um, for those that have not seen all the latest news on things that have been happening with city council, um, we on uh, last week on Tuesday, the city council approved two tax code amendments um, that had come forward from the plan commission. One of them was related to the ability to do two family structures on property within the A4 zoning district that meet a certain set of regulations, a certain minimum lot size, certain minimum width of lot, um, and then they have to meet other regulations regarding parking and other things. Um, if there is further information that anyone needs on this, um, I'm gonna share for a second um, our city website. Um, we've had a lot of questions because there's been misinformation out there. So if you wanna send anyone to our city website, um, there's now a whole page um, that tries to explain some of the misinformation that's out there. Um, and tries to give some additional information. So if you have any neighbors um, or anyone else who does not understand what we've recently approved, um, please send them to the website. Um, I think it would be really helpful. Um, in addition, we also have additional information on the Douglas Hill redevelopment project. Um, hearing information should be going out soon. Um, there'll be signs on the site. Um, they do have, and we have on our city's website, their current submission for the rezoning of that property. Um, it will need to go through a series of hearings before the plan commission. Once it gets through the plan commission, it will go back to hearings before the city council. Um, so this process is going to take a number of months um, and there's a lot that still needs to be digested by um, city staff as we put together our plan commission report for the plan commission opening of the hearing. So again, if there's any information that people need on that, there's a lot of links down the side, there's a place to leave a comment. Um, so please feel free to do that. Um, two family residential, we did also approve at city council um, an additional um, change for um, residential zoning for how large houses can be on undersized smaller lots, um, as well as some changes to the definition of, of half story and how high up houses can be above people that have land that, that slopes down beside them. Um, that did also get approved by the city council. Before the plan commission, Rolling Ridge Nursery asked for a conditional use permit so that they could expand upon um, the way they're using their current building. Um, they are asking for the ability to have um, smaller events within their existing structure, things like um, meetings, uh, birthday parties, uh, wedding receptions, um, things that could happen in their, um, uh, when they're in off season in their um, space, as well as in other times when they um, might not be using, um, not having the, the nursery open. Um, so that has moved forward with an approval from plan commission. It's going to city council at the June council meeting for that hearing, um, and then would move forward for an approval, the meeting after that. 
Um, uh, at, we also had at Plan Commission the beginning talks of multiple family um, zoning in C and D districts. So your district, um, areas along Big Bend, along Watson, anything that's zoned C or D, um, currently either doesn't allow it unless you completely rezone to a PC planned commercial or um, doesn't allow it unless you do a conditional use permit. So one of the things that we've looked at is um, all of our plans, our comprehensive plan and a couple other areas of the way our zoning code is written, encourage that you can have mixed use. You can have residential above um, commercial that you can have or you would want your higher density residential to be closer within your business district for the walkability. Um, and so what we are doing is looking at a code amendment that still would allow you to have it, but only if you can meet a certain set of regulations. If you can't meet those, you still have to go through the full hearing. You'd still have to go through another process. But if you can meet those regulations, the required setbacks, the required density, the required height, we're not increasing height, um, the required um, parking requirements. If you can meet all of those things that you could have it as a permitted use, and go through architecture review board and get it approved um, within one of the C or D districts. So that is still in early discussions at the plan commission. Um, they are going to continue to discuss it. They've we've talked with them for two months about it. Um, it's going to continue at the next meeting in June. Um, so we've got all of that going on. Um, other information for those that, that that can see, Jenny Starkey has joined us for our meeting today. Um, she's just into her second week of work with the city. Um, so some of you know her already. She was sitting on the Business Development Commission. Um, and uh, so I just wanted to make sure that everyone uh, said hello. And I thought I briefly saw Eric come on, but I'm not seeing him on now. Um, our assistant city manager's first day is today. Um, and I, I know he's upstairs somewhere. Um, so you will probably see him on future meetings um, and potentially depending on how Jenny's schedule, you'll see Jenny also. Um, so I think that covers everything. Budget work session is this evening um, with the city council. Um, we will be uh, presenting everything in our budget for the new year. Um, and I think that's all the updates unless anyone has any questions. All right. Um, next meeting is June 8th, Tuesday, June 8th. And then uh, there's nothing else to motion to adjourn. Nothing else that I know of, unless anyone wants to add anything else to next month's agenda. Okay. All right. Everyone uh, have a great week. Should we motion to adjourn? Oh. Motion to adjourn. It's Angel, I'll second. Great. Hi, everybody. Have a great day. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Andrew.